Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, I I'm not my usual chipper self, so uh, that can change. Maybe you guys can change that. I, I don't know. It's a lot going on. I actually did not think. I was going to make it uh, and do the show today. Hey, Yolanda, baby, how you doing? Um, but I made it. That's why I look all crazy and hair all blown away because the wind and in the car and I come running up in here trying to be a person of my word and do the live show. Hey, Ronald, how you doing? First of all, I just want to say welcome to the Les D experience. And all my experiences aren't funny ones. <laughs> Uh, uh I, whatever. I, it's just one of those days. Like I said, we all need therapy, so I'm really gonna be needing therapy today. Hey, six. Hey, KP. How you guys doing? Um, I'm just gonna jump right into it. <laughs> yeah, and let let me let me say this because I don't want anybody texting me, inboxing me, and tripping like oh leslie being this or that or leslie a racist has nothing to do with that whatsoever i have friends of all nationalities friends of all social statuses calibers and everything else so don't even trip like that it, it has nothing to do with that when you're looking at the title you know but it is what it is it was what it was and what was it happened so um and we need to address we, we need to address it uh, for those who don't who don't know i'm currently and um, Virginia, you know, mom and pops and all them, they over there in California, you know, and uh, I'm here in the good old VA. Uh, hello, Martin, how you doing? Uh, hey, Mousy. And so, you know, I'm gonna try to like get through the, what happened really quickly so we can discuss what we need to discuss because something got to give, something, something, something got to stop. Something got to give. And I, I said to myself, on this uh, show, I will not discuss you know, like religion, politics, you know, racism, blah, blah, blah. I wanted us to really just, you know, deal with the practical, you know, everyday things that we go through and try to grow as a people and everything else. But sometimes you, you, it's like, it's unavoidable. So, um, and I need you guys to just like, I have a massive headache. I'm just whatever. So, um, you know, what happened was like yesterday evening, uh, I, I was going, you know, I was on the road doing what I had to do, coming off the ramp. Now, I was coming off the ramp and other cars was coming because we were in Hampton. And um, I looked over and I had about three to four car lengths worth of space to get over. But this big pickup truck decided they want to speed up from 45 to like 60 or 70 something to close that gap. I don't know if he has somewhere to go. I don't know what's going on. But in doing that, he almost sideswiped me. I, he was in the wrong, so I was, but you know, I still didn't trip. I was just going to go on, but my business is going to have to go. He started cursing me out calling me out my name and whatever and it was a you know big white guy i mean huge looking white guy i can only guess i know he had to be over six feet because his head was like almost scraping the top of his calf and it's a big old black you know pickup truck you know and i was in my jaguar I, 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 of all times i didn't even have my jeep i guess it wouldn't have been so bad if i had the jeep but i was so low where his wheels are because that souped up wheels and everything else that when he almost sideswiped me and whatever else, it just would have tore me up and threw me anywhere. Uh, so I slowed up a bit so he can like zoom by. So I'm thinking, okay, idiot, Virginia driver, whatever. But he commences to follow me. And I was like, is he following? Nah, he's not following me. He is not following me. So he is diving different cars to get to where I was on the far left. And I'm like, this dude is following me. And I was like, so I was like, okay. And he was cursing me out, giving me the finger and doing the gun sign uh, to me like that, like boom, boom, you know? And then we were both at a red light, but another car, he tried to get near me, but he couldn't get past the other car. So I could see him in my rear view mirror and he's 
like doing a shooting sign, the gun sign. And he's calling me all kinds of black names and stuff I'm not going to repeat on this channel. And I'm like, okay. All right. So I'm just like, all right, Les. Clearly, it had to be about two, three blocks. He already followed me. And so I was almost at my destination. And I was like, okay. I don't have anything in my car. Oh, because I rarely drive the Jaguar. So I'm like, okay, I don't have a weapon in here. I, I don't have a bat. I don't have the usual tools because they're, that's all in my Jeep. So I'm like, okay, Leslie, what are you going to do? And so I looked at my phone. My phone was dead. I was like, okay. So I said I was not going to because I was almost at my destination. I was like, well, where I was going, there would have been nobody in the car. So it was just been a, a parking lot. And so I turned down the road, and so I passed where I was supposed to go. And he was just dodging, almost hitting other people, trying to get to me. And so I, I kept straight down the road thinking, maybe he'll cool off, or maybe he'll just go about his business. He didn't. So I, I turned left to try to go down the street and just drove to see, was he going to turn left? Almost knocked another little Hyundai over so he can turn left and follow me down the street. And I was like, okay. And so I turned down another street. He followed me again. And I was like, okay. I couldn't even reach my phone. It was dead anyway. And, you know, people always say, why didn't you call this and that? When that stuff is happening and you are drilling and it's going, and, and I have both my hands on the wheel trying to get away from this nut job. You know, then he speeds up, like, past me to get beside me. And so I just steps on the brakes so he can go past me. And like maybe he'll go on about his business. This turns around. I watch him turn around in the middle of the road. And so the only thing I can think of was go. I saw a whole bunch. Y'all, the only thing I could think of was I saw a whole bunch. It looked like he was getting off work. And I saw a whole bunch of like black people, maybe like five or six females and like four or five men or whatever. But they were all just standing there talking in the parking lot. And the only thing I could think to do was pull up in front of these crowd of black people. That, that's all I could think to do. And I didn't park anything. I just pulled up in front of them and just sat there. And he pulled up behind me and he hit his wheel like that. Like, oh, like he couldn't, you know. And the people just looked at me. Then they looked at him and they all stopped talking. They all just looked. And he gave me the finger and called me a black and the word and all of that and sped off. Now, I really had to take time to tell you guys exactly what happened. So you would know, so we can discuss what I could have done differently. This could have go, this, if I, that's, it, it could have gone any kind of way, you know, and, and it's not really, and I'm not gonna take because like I was rushing, I'm looking all crazy now because I had to go out of town today, all today. And every time I saw a pickup truck, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie, any Caucasian man in a pickup truck, I like had anxiety, like, and, and look, cognitively, mentally, I know that's not everybody. I mean, I know that here, but it was so, it was such a I can't even put it into words that every time I look, I was just like this on the interstate, like just trying to stay out of people's way. You know, so my question for today for you guys is what could I have done differently? I had no weapon in the car. I had no mace, didn't have a hammer. All my tools and my toolbox was in the Jeep. The phone was dead. So we're going to get, you know, that, uh, that question going. And also, you know, we need to have a conversation about what do females, like the holidays are coming up, you know, what do, because most of the time we females are running errands alone. We're going to work alone. We're, we're dropping kids off at daycare. You know, women just be out all the time doing anything at the gym, whatever else we're alone. So when we encounter road rage or, or instances like that, or where people are jogging on the, um, pet, on the, you know, on the trail and, and, you know, what, what can we do? 
to protect ourselves? What can our elderly do? Our handicapped and disabled people do? Our teens when they're driving, because they're young, they're still children. Our children when they're driving, you know, what can be done? Um, I, 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 you know, I, I'm gonna see what y'all talk about over here. That's why I'm looking crazy. And, you know, I just ran in. I was going to cancel the show because I wasn't even really feeling it. I, I, I didn't feel like laughing and, and, and being me. It, it, it kind of it stripped something from me. And I cannot tell you, you know, that I, I wouldn't have, if I had a weapon in the car, I probably would have used it. Because he made it very clear that he wanted to harm me, that he had no respect for me being a female um, that the fact that I was black was just, ugh. he made it very known that he wanted to hurt me. Ray Charles could have seen it from the grave. So if I had a weapon in the car, I, I would love to say that I wouldn't have used it, but I think I would have because he was terrorizing me and calling me out of my name and things like that. So I won't, uh, we need to have this discussion about if me or one of you ladies are in that situation phone is dead we're in the car and you got to keep both hands on the wheel to keep from crashing he tried to crash me i just and i was a black emma effa and an n and a i mean every derogatory thing racial slur he could think of he was doing it and he was in the wrong initially i, I just you know i i'm gonna look over here and see what you guys are saying i i've missed a lot let me scroll up i didn't even speak to everybody I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I hate Pansy. I see Keyshawn. Uh, hi, Mousy. Um, okay. Keyshawn Harris says, but that really happened. See, you need a man at your side, Empress. <laughs> yeah, I understand, Keyshawn. Um, but sometimes we're we're like our men have to work. Even if I had a man, I mean they're not always with you. Uh, so my question again is, you know, hey, Adil and um, Lenora and Sonia, um, what do you do? You know, what do you do? Um, how do I, what could I have done? If he, if I would have pulled up to my destination at the proper time and he would have yanked me out that car, I'd probably come to his waist. I'm like five foot on a good day. Um, it, what do you do? I mean, how do you prepare for something like that? You're caught off guard. You're minding your business. Um, you're doing what you need to do. You're working. You're grinding, and um, you don't you don't expect for to, for that to happen. Uh, the deal was like, take me as your bodyguard. <laughs> um, Keyshawn is saying, I definitely need a firearm. <sighs> Has it come to that? Is 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 civility so? <laughs> it's just I. Oh my God! I, I don't even know. I can't even talk like I usually can talk. I'm just so beside myself. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Fel. Um, how you doing? That's my brother, Feltron. Um, okay, Joey Pegram, Pegram um, is saying that I could have drove to the police station. Where I was in a, a, a city I don't live in, didn't know what a police station was. So that way, like if I was in my area, in my city, uh, I know where they are, but there was no one, nowhere near me. Uh, that I could see a station and I wasn't familiar with the area. Uh, so uh, that wouldn't have worked for me. Uh, or I, I could have found a cop, he said. Well, maybe it's me, but a cop is never anywhere around when you really need them. And who knows? <laughs> I mean, we were different races and our, our, our climate um, in today's society is they probably would have arrested me. <laughs> so, you know, uh, we were both speeding down the road, so why, where was the cops? Where, where were they? Why had to go find them? There's this big black truck with tires probably about four feet high chasing a Jaguar. 
through red lights and off streets and on streets and nobody saw that? Where was the cops? Why well, I got to go find them? Really? Um, Otis is saying, Les, I don't know if there's anything differently you could have done. It sounds like you did everything that you possibly could, but you need to carry mace, pepper spray, a bat, anything to protect yourself. Um, yeah, I agree, Otis. I am going to go this weekend and um, find me some mace, maybe the kind. I've heard they go on keychains. I don't know. Google it. And I, I definitely need to get Bessie. I need to have a bat, not just in my Jeep. Because if I was in my Jeep, I would have been fine. But I need to, um, I guess, put an aluminum bat in the Jaguar, too. I don't know. Um, hey, Frank and Gwen. Um, okay, Kishan is saying that um, I shouldn't have to gone through that. Um, I need to carry protection with me from now on. And he said, I should have looked at the license plate. I couldn't see it. I couldn't see everything happened so fast. And he was chasing me. And so because of, I could not see the license plate in my rear view mirror, not even backwards be, because of the positioning of our vehicle. So um, I, and he sped off really quick. It would have been nice if one of the, 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 the people I drove um, into could have taken it, but I asked them and they didn't, think to get the license plates. Uh, I, I will be more leery of license plates from now on if I can uh, um, like initially see it or something. Um, well, Jack is saying first, thank God for you being okay. Well, I do thank God for being okay. You know, um, I, I really do. It still doesn't um, you know, stop me from being apprehensive or being like, yeah, it probably take me a couple of days to get back to being me. It just, it, it, the way I explained it to you guys is nothing to how it really was. It looked like something off a movie or something scripted. It looked, it was crazy. Um, so I, I, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get back to me like in here and uh, not look at people sideways in a truck. Cause that's not fair to everybody else, but that right now I'm just skittish. Um, yeah. Hey, Robert, how you doing? Um, did I speak to Gwen? Hey, Gwen. Hey, Ty. Um, Joe is saying, please be careful when protecting yourself. They could turn the tables around on you. And that could be in trouble with the law, even with carrying a permit. And Jack is saying, second, you did right by keeping your car in motion. Well, that's the only thing I could think of, Jack, was I knew I had enough sense to know don't stop this car, especially in a place where it's just a parking lot and nobody's out there. I couldn't let him, like, get me because um, he was trying to push me over into certain spaces, like, where there was, like, no people, people, cars, parking lots, things like that. But I, I just wouldn't stop the car. I was going to tear that Jag up that day. A car is just a car. But he was not going to get me where he wanted to get me. Um, and Jack is saying third, keep a spare phone and a flip phone. <laughs> I do so much business and I, 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 you know, who can afford that for real, man? Money, funny, change is strange. I mean, I get what you're saying and I do do so much business on my phone and um, phone conferences, video conferences, um, all kinds of stuff that I, I, I the, the juice go quick. The juice go quick on that phone. Uh, cause I got so much crap on it. I send scripts through the phone. I got software for that, you know, music stuff, you know, all kinds of stuff that probably takes up the space or the battery life in the phone. I don't know, but I, I hear what you're saying, Jack. Um, Adil said, it's sad that there's racism that continues now too, even today. You're right, Adil. Um, hi, Angelique. I'm starting to see with some of these, hey, uh, Marlon and Susie and Morris Kennedy, you know, and I, you know, I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm saying and, and, or not like the, the title. Cause I'm getting some texts here too about what I'm talking about or how I'm talking about, but the truth is the truth. Why do we keep trying to sugarcoat the truth? What happened happened. I mean, if he was orange, I would have said angry orange guy. If he was black, I would have said 
angry black guy. I mean, I'm not trying to race bait. You know, stop texting me with the shenanigans, y'all. Anybody who knows me for real know that I don't do that type of thing. So I'm gonna stop explaining my freaking self, you know, but who it was, how it went down, and the outcome is what it was. I I can't sugarcoat that, you know. So everybody know I'm not racist and I'm not stupid and nothing like that. So I ain't gonna be even gonna be tripping like that. Get out of how you know I, I just I am thankful that I'm okay. Um I I I Okay, guys, my question to you is, everybody keeps saying Leslie should have had a gun or you should have had something or this and this and that. You know, I know me. I, I can't fathom killing somebody. And what would have been so stupid for somebody to be dead and the way our justice system is, I'd be in jail in an orange jump jumpsuit with no bra on, looking crazy with braids. I will somehow be in jail <laughs> And people, because people don't look, they won't look at me as a victim because of the color of my skin. Somebody would have said she did something or he could have lied or his loved one could have lied. You guys know anything, any loophole could have, take, um, have, could have taken place and transpired. Or I be dead and him not get no time, you know, because he could have taken the gun. He was much bigger than I was with the intent to harm me. Totally off his rocker with anger, anger unnecessarily, not having even respect or concern for my life. So he could have easily taken the gun or taken it or whatever and shot me. You know, so that's from that's another reason why I thought it was so important to even tell you guys what happened so we can have this discussion. What else could have been done or how else I could have protected myself without me losing my life or him losing his. You know, yes, he was a douche and a jerk and hot-headed and just, and, and not to mention, do you know how many people's lives he put in danger trying to get to me, swerving and almost swiping the back of people's cars or the front of people's cars? Some people had to stop and some people was turned this way, trying to avoid him. He was, wow, I, I just, Let's 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 have that conversation. Um, Joey is saying, try keeping a charge in your car. It can charge while you are driving, and that's true. I just um, my charger had broken, the car charger had broken, and I and I had said to myself, look, I'm just running over here real quick. I got about, <laughs> I think I had about like nine percent. I don't know on my car because I was already out for the day and had been talking on the phone, having meetings, blah, 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 and whatever else. And then I looked at my phone before this started. I think I may have been at maybe 9%, 10%. And I went, eh, anybody who wants me can wait till I get home and get a charge. That's, that was my attitude or, or my mindset at the time. Had no idea. And then a lot of people were like, um, why didn't you record what was going on? Don't nobody have time to be recording a dilemma or recording that man's face. I'm trying to keep from wrecking and killing myself, killing the other um, drivers around me, trying to find somewhere to go, trying to stop this madness. And then how can you record him if your phone is dead? You know, come on. So, um, there's so many. <laughs> okay, Kashan is saying, well, I understand how you feel, but if your life is in danger and it's a life or death, and you have, and if you have protection, would you use, would you use it for protection, or let them take yours, take my life? But this is a lesson learned for me, I guess. Hi, Janice. Hi, Gary. Um, and Jack is saying, change the paradigm of your travels. You are small enough to make this a positive teaching experience. Do you mean smart? I don't know what you mean about that. But, you know, this is a teaching, it's a learning experience for me. Um, I know several things I need to do. I need to get, because I call my bat Bessie, and I need to get another Bessie too uh, for my other vehicle. I need to go get some mace, something that's on me that I can have on my person. Um, but, you know, and, you know, and what you guys are not even thinking about, 
what if he would have had a gun? Because he kept going like that to me, like, mm, mm. You know, so even if I had a bat or the mace or a gun in my car, glove compartment under my seat or whatever else, since he has already had that mindset to hurt me or whatever else, he could have already had his gun in his lap or right beside him as he drove. So when he pulled up, he could have just went bam. You know what I'm saying? So we we talk this stuff, um, you know, in the safety of our computers or the phone or why everything is calm or whatever else. But um, you you it goes so quickly, guys. I mean, that stuff goes like bam, 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 bam. It go, you don't have time to do anything but the fight or flight primitive thinking. Okay, I got to think of something really quick. And the only thing that I could think of was pull up in the middle of a group of people and just sit my car there. I didn't even look at the people on what their initial reactions were. I pulled up where they were. I saw them turn around, but then I looked at him and he was just like, oh, you can like almost see the <laughs> evil in his face. And he, bam, hit his steering wheel like he was pissed and disappointed because he didn't get me. And then he uh, 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 and gave me the middle finger. All of that, y'all, all of that over traffic. I, I just, I'm, we as a society here in America, I can only speak of America because I don't live nowhere else. But, you know, there's no chivalry no more, it seems like. There's no civility. There's no respect for human life. There's no common courtesy. And, and everybody's in a rush to go everywhere. Now, if he was just so in a rush to get to his destination that he sped up four car lengths to keep me from coming off the ramp, didn't he waste that time chasing me around for 15 minutes? You could have just wait, let me in, and we both went on with our lives. He would not have been a topic on the Less D experience. You see what I'm saying? People don't think. You're rushing to get nowhere, rushing to get in the accident, or rushing to get dead. I mean... What would it have hurt for him just to follow the law of the road? I had plenty of space to get in. You drive the normal speed and I'm in there and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know if something happened to dude. He had an experience with some other black woman an hour ago. <laughs> I don't know. And it's not my job to know, but it is my job to keep him from hurting me. I did not deserve any of that, you know, um, and so my question today uh, for you guys, um, how would you instruct your wife, your woman, your mother, your sister, your auntie, your nana, because they busting old people in the head, punching old people, disabled, handicapped. They doing all kinds of stuff out here, y'all. So how would you instruct a female loved one in my situation? Uh, I, you know, I got some things that I'm going to do as well that I'm not going to say on live to protect myself in any other upcoming threats on my person. Um, uh, <laughs> Adil said, when he gives you this, you got to look at what he did with the pictures. You could have given him that. <laughs> Mousy is saying, um, it worries me that he will do this to someone else. Shaking my head. That's what I was thinking, Mousy. Um, if he was so readily and comfortable and confident that he could do this to me. He don't know. I could have been a judge, a lawyer. I could have been anybody. He doesn't know and did not care because guess why he didn't care. He knows, or he's been made to think that because of who he was and because of who I was, that if he would have hurt me, injured me, maimed me, or murdered me, that he could have possibly got away with it. That's just my opinion. You guys can have that conversation over there in the comment section. Um, but that's my opinion. And I'm not going to get up here talking about leadership of this country or whatever else, because I got my own thoughts about that. And that's not what I'm here to do. But I will tell you that there has been an attitude bred in our society that make people think it's okay to harm and hurt and do things to certain said people. How are we going to protect ourselves? How am I going to protect myself next time? Am I going to be able to sleep at night if I have to hurt someone who's trying to hurt me? 
These are horrible questions that we have to ask ourselves in 2018, not 1818, not 1918, but 2018. We have to go, okay, don't go here, don't do this, don't look that way, da da da, blah blah blah. But even when you're doing nothing, nothing, I could have easily been a headline on today. Guess what? A headline without the truth being told. None of you would have known how that really went down if I wasn't blessed enough to be alive to tell you guys what exactly happened. Because if I would have expired or be incapacitated in any way, he could have told the story any way he wanted to flip that story. And the media and people would have believed it, y'all. You better think about that. How can I protect myself? How can you protect yourself, ladies? Men, how can you protect your women, your loved ones, your sisters and cousins and mothers and things like that? We, we need to keep that conversations going and uh, <sighs> now I need more therapy. <laughs> it's all good. You know what, well, guys, you guys keep the conversation going in the comment section. Um, I gotta go unwind or do something. So keep the conversation going. I will um, come back and look and see what you guys are talking about and chime in. Uh, again, uh, don't forget to go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Just look for the Less D experience. It should pop up. Subscribe, uh, share. I'm trying to get 1,000 um, subscribers by December 25th because I'm in the mood to give some gifts away to those who help me um, reach that goal. Uh, Levi Little, I talked to him. He's a member of Black Street. Um, I will be interviewing him uh, on YouTube Live. I'll let you know uh, when we decide to do that. Uh, but uh, sounds like Black Street maybe will want to come back. Yes, so proud of Levi and Black Street. Um, so those are the type of things that can happen over there on YouTube. Uh, but as for here, you guys keep these comments going. Um, pray that I get back to being me. <laughs> Not quite myself yet. All right, guys. Love you much. We all need therapy. Let's talk.